Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I am Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Beats and Beats. Gentlemen, first on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Cheers. Holy shit! So, how's everybody's? Uh, how's everybody's week? Uh, Mark, I saw you went to a show. I did. Yeah. On a Saturday, I went over. I went to go to San Diego. And I saw Dayseeker, Rain City Drive, and a band called Avoid play, and uh, they were fantastic, dude. That was the hell of a fucking show. I've never, I've never been to Soma in San Diego. Have you guys been there before? I have not. No. No. Yeah, dude. The the sound there is is amazing. I loved, I loved that venue. That venue was really cool. So apparently, Dayseeker is from San Diego, and uh, this was like their hometown venue that they played the side stage a lot on before. And this was nice. their first time playing the main room and they sold it out. It was like 2,300 people. So Oof. uh they sold out, they sold it out and it was the last show of their tour that they just did. So it was cool. It was, it was cool. Nice. It was cool to see. It's always cool to see people coming up, coming up, you know, it's always cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Rob? How's the, uh, what are you, you under arrest or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you jerk you told me to put it on the stroke. Uh, no, everything's good. Just tornado warnings. That's what these lights are. Okay. Are How we going to do, are we gonna do going? a top, top five reasons why Rob got arrested? Can we do that? <laughs> Guess why I got arrested. <laughs> First one, tornado. Like, what? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah, I started a tornado. Uh, yeah. Started a tornado. Just ripped ass really hard one day. <laughs> Josh, how you, how you been, Josh? How's your week been? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, end of the year coming up for the kids, so we're getting pretty busy. Uh, my son is graduating sixth grade, whatever you want to call it. So looking forward to getting through that. And then uh, my daughter's birthday is coming up. My wife's birthday is a couple days, too. So be Busy with family stuff right now. That's awesome. Well, oh, you get Jenny? her. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I get her. <laughs> She's sitting right here, bro. <laughs> no, literally, yeah. Yeah, no, don't. That's funny. You don't have to tell us what you got her. But we know what you're giving her. Yeah. <laughs> A night to herself. I'm gonna go take the kids to go see Garfield the movie. That, if that was the choice, I think she'd go with us, and then that would be dessert. Oh, wow. There you go. That's the spirit. Turn her Danny. into a Cinnabon. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Oh, How you been, Danny? I'm good. I'm good. Just hanging out, you know, like, uh, like Josh, I got some, uh, into the school year stuff happening, you know, um, you know, that, that stuff. And then, uh, you know, been writing some stuff and hanging out. So it's all good. You know? Yeah, man. That's cool. Oh, Rob, uh, anything in particular that, you want to talk about today? Be, wait, go ahead. No, I was going to say anything in particular you want to talk about right now? Well, I was going to say with, uh, Danny mentioning writing, that we go into talking about our first projects that we've ever partook in as being like in a band and mm -hmm. the writing process from that as to what it is, how we do it now. Like, For sure. How do you feel it's developed? So uh, if you want to take it and tell us about your first band. I knew you were going to do that. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, question though. Clarification for first band. Are we saying first band that like did shows that was like a decent show? Or are we talking backyard shows that anybody could go to? I'm talking first time you got together with a group of individuals and played together and then started writing your own material. Now, whether you okay. played a show or whether you just formed a group and it never went anywhere. How has it grown from that process into what it is now? Uh, I mean, describe your first band. And I mean, we all know the young and youthful days of starting out in a band versus how we're doing it now. 
So I want to hear each person's kind of like, oh, this is how it's different and how it's grow, mature. Got it. Oh. Go ahead. So you want me to you want me to take the lead on that yeah, one? Go ahead. I'll All go right, first. Sure. Go go oh. first, Danny. Go ahead. Go for it. All right. So uh, Rob, to answer your question, um, I was God. I must have been uh, probably eighth grade. And uh, had a couple buddies. We talked about jamming and stuff. And uh, I bought a guitar and started learning. And the other two buddies of mine, they never bought a bass and never bought drums. And so I, I met a guy that played drums. And he was in, like, the high school, you know, band. And he was, like, the drummer. And he was, like, really good, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and a buddy of mine uh, could sing. So we formed a punk band called, we call ourselves Migraine. And uh, we hit the uh, backyard party circuit, you know, around the San Gabriel Valley in Southern California. And uh, we pretty much, our songs were pretty much all about killing the president. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh. I think which was George George Bush, George, George Bush, maybe it was George Bush or, yeah, that had been George Bush at the time. Senior though, so right? All, all the, songs, the first, the first George Boys, the first one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was that one. Old ass, Whichever, yeah. yeah, the older. <laughs> yes, uh, and yeah, dude, the process was like I said, we were a punk band, so it was kind of like three, four chords as fast as we could play them, and drums as fast as we could go in whatever crazy, ridiculous pattern, you know, and we just kind of put it together and screamed our asses off at, you know at wars and shit like that, you know, and, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and would you say, <laughs> would, would you say your writing process is different now than it was back then? No, it's exactly the same. Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. That's, I think awesome. it hasn't changed at all. I don't be paying, 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 paying attention. It ain't changed at all. <laughs> Still want to kill the president. All right. <laughs> this, this episode ain't getting canceled. <laughs> oh, boy. This, this time it's not me, though. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, FBI, FBI. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. That was, that was, I was like 11, okay? I was 11, you know? In eighth grade? In eighth grade? Yeah, yeah, in eighth grade. <laughs> okay, so whenever that was, how old you are at eighth grade? Four, that's more 15? No. In no, eighth God, grade? No. I hope not. <laughs> Damn, boy, <laughs> you <laughs> fell behind. <laughs> the math ain't math in here, folks. <laughs> you should be 13 or so in <laughs> eighth grade. 12, 12, Right about there. Yeah. Let's, let's specifically get that I was 13 years old in eighth grade. Maybe 12, I'm not sure. Maybe 35. 15. I don't know. I'm horrible <laughs> <Maybe>. numbers. <laughs> I'm not really that good. eighth grade math. Did you already have the full does, beard? Does, hey, hold on real quick. Does Rob know that we smoked a joint before we got on here? And now he wants me to fucking try to like articulate exactly what great, age I was. Great. I, mean, I, I just know I'm in great company now. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's all <laughs> <laughs> I'm think, over here I'm just like, say... hey, let me go have a cigarette. And you guys are just uh, nice. What was the name of that project? Migrate. Migraine. Now that wasn't the same one that was doing the industry later on, though, right? Because you heard about that one, yeah. Which one? Well, no, there was a band. That wasn't there. So, so we we discovered that there was another band. I think I don't know if they were in Europe, but their name was Migraine, and they were a punk band. But we 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 didn't really like fucking. My dad had dial up at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really fuck around with trying to check to see. Who had that name? We were a fucking punk band talking about killing the. Pr- we weren't really concerned of who had the name or not, you know. Well, in no, our eyes, in our mind, it was ours, and that's it, you know. No, I get that, but there was another band that was in the L.A. scene called Migraine, and the singer sure. was like this little scrawny white dude, and he painted himself white and shaved his head. And... That wasn't us. That yeah, was, and that's that was what I'm some, saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that, that wasn't us. That wasn't I us. See you guys. Remember, playing. remember. Remember the part where I said we toured the the backyard party circuit of the San Gabriel Valley? Oh, okay. That was about as far as it went. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah! So you, you you even you even lived 
in Glendora, and you didn't even hear about us. Well, but that's that that's was my first saying project. a whole bunch either because you never heard. Well, I mean, you only heard about my my first band, which was telling take you. it away, and, and we were in the same fucking town. Like, so it was like, you know, just uh, I mean, for me, it all started like I my buddies came together and. They're like, oh, he's going to play guitar. I'm going to play drums. You're playing bass. And I'm like, what the fuck's a bass? And they're like, oh, it's a guitar, but it's lower. And so just learning bass, and we were going through singer. Well, it was more friend through friend through friend through friend. It's like, none of these friends can sing. Fuck these guys. And so I was like, (laughs) well, we're meeting a lot of bass players. So let's just pick up a bass player, and then I'll start singing. All right. And... Then that's when we found out I couldn't sing. So I just started screaming. I was really hoping that that's where you were going with it. Yeah, it was... Ah, no. Okay, there we go. Let's go. Now, uh, my first show ever. And uh, this is... I can't believe I did this. Uh, we, we were friends with uh, church bands. I guess you could say like youth group bands and they would play like these little venues and churches on the weekends and kids would get together. And so, yeah, I know. And so one band dropped out of this festival at this church and they're like, Hey, we need another band. Can you guys play? And we're like, yeah, we got five songs. Cool. Come play them. All right. And we played five songs and it was just like, Oh hell yeah! Uh-huh. These these kids were into it, and you couldn't even hear me. Awesome! Let's keep doing this. So he's like, "What the fuck's up, Jesus? <laughs> what the, what's up? What's up? What the fuck's up, Jesus?" <laughs> <laughs> it's called a communion pit. What the fuck is <laughs> up, Harvest Church food? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, you want to go next? <laughs> Sure. For me, it's kind of a split story because my first band, I would consider it wasn't really a band because of the fact that I decided to have a kid at the age of 15, 16. <laughs> so when that band was starting, I kind of had to stop for like two, three years. So I wouldn't Hell really yeah. consider that a band band, but luckily the main guitar player of that band I'm still in contact with to this day is still pretty much a very good friend of mine, if not my best friend, and is the guitar player in my other band. So I still managed to keep some of that together. Oh. But um, if I'm going to be honest, first real band with band members writing songs, playing shows would be a continuation of last week, that same damn band that I quit that got me into all kinds of shit. It's that same band that we started off in the backyard shows, writing music, and it was just basically guys I went to high school with. We loved metal. Nobody in the area was playing it, and it was, let's just learn some cover songs. Let's learn Slayer. Let's learn this and that, and let's play some shows. And then it turned into, hey, well, you guys should write some songs because you got material, but we didn't have a singer. So we were just playing songs, and if anybody knew the song, jump up and sing. That that kind of worked for a while, but then it was kind of like, we ain't going to get out of the neighborhood backyard area unless we find a singer. Lo and behold, we find a singer who's from Compton, so I should have seen where that was gonna go. No, this is no. this is this is the one where where you you somebody got stabbed and stuff, right? Yes, somebody got stabbed. My wife almost got yeah. tasered by the sheriff. Yes, yeah, same damn band, same band. Oh, so man. I started off with them and then learned from those days. Like, yeah, I don't want to do that. But writing process, like getting together in the garage, jamming out stuff, and then actually going into a studio and recording, that was my first band that we did, like anything where we didn't even track song by song. It was just a full live performance. Let's play three songs all together. Let's do it. We went out to Carson City and got it done in four hours. So to go from that to now, spending the time with pre-production, writing the song, okay, let's go, let's give it a week. Let's see what it sounds like. Taking the time to just build on it and not like, okay, 
we wrote a song in one day, that's going to be the song. Like going from that to this now, night and day, it's, I don't want to say it's much more fun, but you see the difference and it's also age, like going from, I was 16 to now I'm 40. Mm -hmm. You just learn, you learn as you get older and the times are different. We didn't have the ability to record a practice and then remember what you did and exactly oh. like, you'd be yeah. lucky if you were shit faced and how did that riff start? I don't know, bro. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. So it's Mark. It, it's a lot better. <laughs> Mark. All right. So uh, my first band. It's interesting because you guys all started very young. Uh, I didn't actually join a band until I was in like my almost my mid twenties. I was probably twenty two, something Ooh. like that. But uh, <clears throat> I had a friend of mine who was a, a karaoke host at a local bar and I used to always go hang out there and sing. And she was like, Hey, I know guys looking for a band. I'll, you know, hook you guys up with information. And that's how I joined that band. Um, <clears throat> that band was called no one's mercy. Uh, that was your first band. That was my very first band, sir. Yeah. Wow. So that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's interesting to hear the, like your guys' stories. And then like, you know, two out of the three of you already know, like have known me since that first band <laughs> since that first band so yeah i mean i know we all known each other for ages but yeah. this is more for everyone else to get to hear like the hey, this is how this yeah band. for sure yeah yeah for sure yeah no so started that band um went through a couple of different uh variations of of band members and then at the the final stage of it myself and josh were drumming for us um yep. so both of you were drumming. Uh, That's good. That's good for you. <laughs> yeah. So being it was my, being that it was my first band, I'd never done that before. I'd never even attempted to like write songs. Like it was it was it was something where like I always felt like I wanted to do it, but I never really knew where to start. So I just kind of never did until it was kind of like, hey, go talk to this guy. So and then all right, cool. Now I gotta start thinking like a musician, thinking like a singer, doing this. <clears throat> I never really worked on my voice back then. Um, you know, it was it's just a lot of things that, as quote, like the process back then was very much getting the, get in the, get in the, get in the lockout and, hey, you jam something. Oh, I was thinking of something. I started playing this and then, oh, like play to this and just kind of see where the song goes from there. Now, the hard part with that particular band was certain band members remembering what they played the week before so that we can continue writing the new song. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Josh. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah, Mark. That's yeah. every band. Yeah. yeah. That's Same every thing. band. Like, what did we play last time? Like, yeah. Because, and I think that's the difference now is technology. Yes. Like we all have that 100%. capability of recording on our phones now as yeah. opposed to back then we had to find someone with a four track that you could like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. So, so uh, back then, I think my process of doing stuff was more, and not like intentionally doing it, but when I think about it now, it's like it was more me imitating what I thought a singer should be or what I thought I should be doing as opposed to just finding myself, finding my voice, finding, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. Um, and then you go, you know, 20 years later, almost, fuck, I'm, I'm 41. And with this band, it's just an entirely different process, obviously. Like it's like you said, it's the technology being able to, hey, I got this idea and having, we have the luxury, because not every band does, of having a Danny in our band that's got everything in his fucking living room where he's yeah. like, hey, man, you want to see how that fart sounds with some drums? Let's do it. Like, let's fucking go, you know, like, let's get, let's get, like, we, like, literally, we're just, Danny's we'll literally slow, just hey, we'll slow at his it, desk all we'll the time. We'll slow so. it down. We'll slow it down, and then we'll bit crush it, and then we'll chop it up, create a beat out of it, and that'll be our drum. We can do it. I'm just saying, yeah, dude. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah. So you know, I take I take much better care of myself now. You know, trying to get into shape. I I do a lot of cardio to keep my wind. So like, you know, I'm doing I'm doing vocal warm ups now and trying to you know trying to take care of myself and get better as a singer. I love that you guys continue to push me to do different things. You guys were talking about that, that last week. 
And I too am very excited to see where this goes to see, because there's yeah. times where like I listen to some stuff that you guys are starting to write. And I'm like, that's dope. What the fuck am I going to do on that? Oh, and it's like, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just interesting to see. And it makes me think in different ways. And it's got me listening to different music just so I can kind of take a little bit of influence or like, of like, you know, just to see, Hey, what do people who sound like me when they attempt to get a little bit more aggressive or whatever? What does that sound like? And uh, see, and right there and right there, then we make an album. You see what I'm saying? Go. Yeah, that's all the sauce. We just do it. That's it. You know. Yeah. So it's uh, for for me my my writing process uh, back when I was in that original band, and you know even like the first band I was in with Rob our writing process was much more crude. It was much more, you know, here's a guitar riff and then somebody makes a drum beat to it, you know? Um, and then we throw, start throwing, you know, lyrics to it and vocals and figure it out. Now, you know, we have some of these songs like, uh, I know we've talked about it before, but some of them started with just a piano part. Mm -hmm. Some of them started with a drum beat. Some start with a guitar riff. I'm pretty sure some of them started with a sample that sounds somewhat like a fart, but you know, I mean, I'm, you know, so <laughs> I think from, and another thing too is, is, is from, from then I was just a kid in my garage that was learning power chords. You know what I'm saying? Listening to Nirvana and like, you know, Pantera, you know? Uh, so now, you know, this, I went to some school and I did some shit and I worked on some stuff and now, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of a little bit of music theory in there. There's a little bit of, you know, just kind of let shit happen and let it fly, you know? Yeah. So me personally, I was always kind of, uh, I was always hard to release things or do anything because I always had that, like, if it's not done in a professional recording studio or, you know, we can't release something until it's like, fuck, we got some kind of label behind it. And that's like, I kind of grew up coming out of an era where that actually existed into a time where it does it and now it's like you know what i don't really have to fucking do all of that i could just fucking make it how i want and release that shit and fuck it yeah so mm -hmm. i want to say well, that's how my process has kind of changed yeah. you know i have a question for you danny so yeah. how so for those of you who don't know <clears throat> a lot of what we do starts in danny's head danny usually has like an idea and it starts like he said with the piano or like a synth or some drums <clears throat> and then it's like he throws it onto the to the dropbox for us and he's like you guys basically go shopping what sound what do, you, what do you like throw it in the basket you know and my question to you is how much of when you sit down is i'm going to sit down to intend to write a song in this style as opposed to I'm just going to see what the fuck happens. I think 50, 50. Okay. You know, I also, I also think there's also approach that I take too. also in like a song that kind of tends to highlight uh, a certain part of the band, you know, like, like I want to do like almost like symphony of chaos. I know that this is a little bit different because, you know, yeah, we're running tracks and, and on that song specifically, we have, several tracks that are like uh strings and and uh you know basically a whole damn orchestra and you know nobody on stage is actually playing those instruments i got news what? for you oh but <laughs> Fuck him. so so like that song was like let's do this orchestra thing and like another song's like hey this one's gonna kind of highlight like rob's kind of real aggressive you know what i'm saying so it's like I always try to kind of connect those things together, you know, mm. and kind of go, Hey, I could, I could achieve this type of song and highlight this person's kind of ability and try to try to drive that, you know? And, mm. and there's, there's a lot of it that I just, like you said, I, I put down an idea and then it's just, like you said, it's, you want to shorten something, make it longer, change it. You want to just, I mean, you guys all know you can literally just hit re-roll on any part of the song and I'll just go, what you got, you know, I'll yeah. let's do it, you know? So. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Anything else, Rob? Uh, yeah. I would say there's a major step in that process that uh, Danny says, hey, what do you guys think? And 
Uh, usually gold follows this, these uh, three words. You're going to hate me? <laughs> You're going to hate me. No. Yeah. Yeah. Just after that, it's usually like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, lay it on me. What do you want? Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's one of those things. Like, I know I know you say it because you're like, all right, I know I'm going to just throw down some work on you. And it's like, but that's, there's a lot of good shit that comes from that, you know? Don't so. forget my favorite three hit that we always get. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Hey, hey, let me ask you this though. When have we not heard you out? He's got a point. Yeah, but, He's got a point. Uh, I would say uh yeah, we'll, we'll save that for another we'll talk, we'll talk, we can we can get more in depth about this stuff next episode, but like one of my favorite things that happens with you, Rob, specifically every once in a while is there's a couple there's a, there's a I wanna say maybe I think it was like I think it was control and uh I think it was Symphony, where like when you first started showing me the idea, I wasn't completely sold on it. I was like, uh, maybe it wasn't Control because Control I had wrote the lyrics to. So, uh, no Symphony, because yeah, it, here's a quick little story about Symphony. Go if ahead. you go back and you listen to the verse parts, you can hear Mark singing in falsetto. <laughs> in order for Mark to get to that. I had to do it and be like, hey, no, this is what I'm hearing you do. <laughs> it, it was the worst fucking thing ever. But it was like, hey, I, just sing it like this. And so what Mark is singing, my horrible ass had to do it for Mark. To, like, hey, this is what I'm envisioning. All right. Do we still Mark have any, any evidence of that anywhere, Danny? Do we, do we have any, any, no, any there's evidence, no evidence of that, of that right? I don't think there's any evidence. It all got deleted. You know, Sorry. I, I you... think I think we'd have to take a journey yeah. to the boneyard and see. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, really quick. So where I was going with that was uh, just the your creative process to me sometimes is like a beautiful chaos because oh. like there's like like because you're you're very much like hey let's let's do this and do this and uh, let's do this and like uh, really fast and so sometimes it's like. I don't know, Rob, but and then like we get to like the point to where you're like, just hear me out. And, and once we hit to that point and we'll Danny and I will sit there and be like, well, yeah, the fucking of course, that shit fucking rule. <laughs> so, like, you know, like it sounds like one of those things where it's just like I just love the fact I just love the way your mind works when it comes to the, the writing process, because it's very different from mine. Obviously, we write differently. But, yeah, I just think that that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Alrighty. just the whole the I think the difference is it's like I know you wrote it to be at this BPM, but let's one point five. And then it's just like at some point we're just like, can Josh actually play this? Like I don't know. Maybe let's slow it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that, that's we, my favorite. We've done a few we've done a few where we're like, okay, where do we feel cool about going, hey Josh, play this? You know what I'm saying? Like we hit that spot and we're like Okay, let's now we say what do you think about this tempo? And yeah. One thing one thing that I do love though is that he's so fucking talented that like most of the times we're like I would say like, all the time, not even most of the time. So far, every single time we've been like, Josh, can you play that? And he'll be like, Yeah, that's not a problem. You're like, let's fucking do it. You know, like let's go. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I, I love that. Yeah. It's either that or I'm going to figure out a way how to make it work. Like, if I can't, then I'm going to try. I'm going to learn because there's always a challenge. Yeah. He always loves – he wants to take a swing at it no matter what it is. It's cool. Yeah. All righty, guys. We're getting towards the end of this episode here. You guys, we have a new single dropping, uh, Remain on Tame Nocturnal Mix, uh, June 6th. It's like two weeks away, guys. Two two Fridays away, something like that. Yeah. Hit that big save button. So – we have it available for pre saves uh, for Spotify and for Apple Music, and it's available in the links in our bio. And if, also, if you go there, pick up some sweet merch. Here's a sweater that I'm rocking right here. It's nice. We got hats and shit. Share this video, like it, subscribe to all of the stuff. You know what to do. We love you guys. We're out.